If you're working in DevOps, cloud infrastructure, or software development in 2025, there's a brand new certification, particularly for platform engineers. The CNCF just launched the Certified Cloud Native Platform Engineering Associates, also known as the CNPA. And it's the first certification specifically designed for understanding one of the hottest disciplines in tech right now, platform engineering. But here's what's important to understand. This isn't a hands-on technical exam. It is technical, but it's not hands-on. The CMPA tests your fundamental understanding of platform engineering concepts, principles, philosophies, and technologies. So I'm gonna break down exactly what you need to know to pass this relatively conceptual exam in about under 10 minutes. First, let's understand the core concept. Platform engineering isn't just DevOps with a new name. It's a fundamental shift in how we think about infrastructure, developer productivity, and the services that we offer for that. Your traditional operations thinking says things like, how do we keep systems running? How do we respond to requests? How do we manage infrastructure? Platform engineers think of, how do we treat infrastructure as a product? How do we enable developer self-service? And how do we reduce the cognitive load for developers? So the key concept that CMPA tests, which is basically that platform engineering applies product thinking to internal infrastructure. So you're not just maintaining systems, you're building products that developers use with users, adoption metrics, continuous improvement. So who should take the CMPA? The CMPA is perfect for understanding platform engineering fundamentals if you're maybe a DevOps engineer wanting to understand platform strategy, a software engineer interested in infrastructure concepts, a solutions architect designing platform engineering approaches, or basically anyone wanting to understand modern platform engineering infrastructure philosophy. Now, this certification is going to validate that you understand platform engineering concepts and principles, not that you know how to implement specific tools. This is not the CKA. So think of it as your foundation for understanding the platform engineering discipline. Let's talk about the CMPA exam structure. Let me show you the official site. This is the official site for the Cloud Native Platform Engineering Associate Certification. As you can see, the CMPA is listed right there. We're going to close out this little penguin, cute little penguin thing. Now, the CMPA is a 60-question multiple-choice exam. And as you can see here, this is the usual kind of training portal from the Linux Foundation. So it's 60 questions. You have 120 minutes to complete it, and you need a 75% to pass. So let's take a look here. So notice that the details aren't necessarily listed here, but this is valid for two years, includes a 12 month exam eligibility. You get one retake. It is a multiple choice exam. It is 120 minutes. As you can see here, here's also the exact exam breakdown. And so we're gonna take this one point at a time, but notice here that this first set is actually 36%. It is over a third of the actual coverage of the exam. And this is true. This is gonna cover things like declarative resource management, mutable versus immutable, API first design uh, focus, the self-surface versus manual. It's also going to cover pieces of GitOps, platform engineering goals, objectives, basic architecture. It actually is a lot more complex than you kind of want it to be, <laughs> honestly. I actually just took the certification within the last three days of making this recording, um, and it was both easier and harder than I expected it to be in certain areas. Let's talk about the second domain. This is all about platform observability, security, and performance. Now for this one, right, there's kind of three pillars of observability, which is trace metrics logs. You could add events in there. You could add dashboarding in there. It talks about things like zero trust principles, secure service communications. Do you understand what Gatekeeper and OPA are? Basic understanding of how to secure Kubernetes and, of course, security in CI CD pipelines. So remarkably important. Next is the Continuous delivery and platform engineering generic domain. This is actually about CI, CD, and GitOps. So this is going to talk about continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, how to do a little bit of incident response, and it's going to talk a lot about GitOps, particularly around things like Argo, but also do you understand the push-pull kind of model that GitOps could represent? Well, not just GitOps, but you get the general idea. So that's about a sixth of the exam. The next section of the exam is going to cover things like platform APIs, right? So this is about an eighth of the exam, including how Kubernetes does kind of this whole kind of, um, 
you know, watch, evaluate, change, right? So it does like this whole comparison loop. APIs for self-service platforms, including custom resource definitions, infrastructure provisioning, and of course, the operator pattern for Kubernetes, as you can see there. The other pieces that are covered uh, are things like the developer experience, which is one twelfth of the exam. So you're going to have, you know, just a handful of questions on this, but all about service catalogs, developer portals, AI and ML inclusion. And of course, last but not least, is a lot about the Dora metrics. There is a lot about the Dora metrics. So if you don't know lead time to change, you don't know mean time to recovery, you don't know, you know, like change success, right? Deployment frequency. If you don't actually know the Dora metrics, you're going to have some problems. It also talks a little bit about adoption and other pieces. So these are the domains that covered. The rest of this is actually just standard kind of Linux foundation confidentiality agreements, frequently asked questions. Now, I will forewarn you, it is 60 questions, 65 questions, actually. Um, but when I took the exam, there were actually 85 questions. So I don't know if those were extras, but I want you to be aware that I, when I took the exam, it actually had 85 questions on it. And I'm not sure if 25 of those questions weren't just like test questions. It didn't say anything about it, but I just wanted you to be aware. Okay. So that covers all the domains in detail. So what makes the CMPA different? So let's roll back to this. So here's how the CMPA differ from other certifications. CKA, the Certified Kubernetes Admin, that's going to test your hands-on ability to do cluster management and operations of all types, right? The, the CMPA is going to test platform concepts, so it's not hands-on. If you're taking, for example, the AWS Solutions Architect, well, that's going to test your ability to understand features and services and integrations and design as it relates to cloud service implementations. The CMPA is just going to test platform design principles. It's not actually testing specific service features per se. And pretty much any other certification is going to focus on its area of focus. The CMPA is really just focused on platform engineering thinking and platform engineering strategy, platform engineering concepts. The CMPA asks questions like, what's the primary difference between traditional operations and platform engineering? It's like, well, platform engineering treats internal infrastructure as a product with users. Traditional infrastructure just basically treats it as a service to keep up. They're, the customer is not really clearly defined in most cases. So here's a gentle study roadmap, though we are going to provide an entire series of questions. And we have a course on this as well. Phase one. Spend two to three weeks understanding platform engineering principles and philosophy. Learn the difference between platform thinking and traditional operations. Study cloud native concepts and principles. And kind of understand the difference between immutable and mutable. The difference between declarative and imperative. That's going to be your first kind of few weeks. Phase two is that you're going to do a kind of a one or two week deep dive and study observability concepts, which is a huge part of the actual exam. So you're going to study observability concepts, not necessarily tools implementations. You're going to learn deployment strategy concepts and trade-offs. You're going to understand some API design principles. You're going to study developer experience and cognitive load concepts. And then in phase three, you're going to add an additional few weeks where you're just going to take some conceptual practice tests, maybe review the CNCF platform engineering white paper. They have a whole white paper just on platforms, which is amazing. And you're going to focus on understanding why certain approaches are recommended and then you're going to practice explaining platform concepts in your own words. So the total study time is probably somewhere between 20 to 60 hours, just depending on your already base level of understanding. So in about six weeks, you could achieve this pretty easily. Now, if you're already working strongly in the CNCF landscape and like you have the CKA, you probably just need to pick up a few ideas. And for the most part, you're ready to go. Remember, this isn't about memorizing like tool commands, but I just want to say this. When I just took the test, there was actually one tool command about Helm, about whether you understand how to both do an upgrade and an install at the same time. Anyway, it was very fa fascinating. Uh, I actually didn't know the answer, but I was shocked that it was on there. So you want to read the CNCF platform engineering documentation, understand the principles, and think about why certain approaches work better than others. Let me show you a typical CMPA question breakdown. What characterizes effective platform documentation? A, comprehensive technical specifications only. B, self-service guides with examples and troubleshooting information. C, internal architecture details for all users. Or D, printed manuals distributed to all teams. In this case, the answer is B, right? B 
because we want to provide self-service. We want to enable that. So we're going to give it in that context as much as possible. Self-service is a core platform engineering principle. So it's not really testing if you know how to write documentation. It's testing if you understand what makes the platform documentation more effective from a developer and user experience perspective. We're going to provide more questions so that you can get a feel for the exam, but it is really closer to like AZ900 or the KCNA or Cloud Practitioner from AWS. It's actually closer to that level of exam. Now, remember the CMPA validates your understanding of platform engineering as a discipline, not your ability to use specific tools. It's about understanding the principles that make platform engineering successful, the concepts that, d- that drive developer productivity, and the thinking that separates platform engineering from traditional operations. If you're ready to master platform engineering concepts and other CNCF topics, just go ahead and visit codecloud.com slash CNCF, which is our landing page for all of our CNCF material. Platform engineering will be listed there. And as we release future courses on platform engineering, you'll see them there as well. So hit subscribe, hit like for more platform engineering insights. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to actually review a bunch of CNPA questions. So we'll see you then. 